Number one says that we have a circle with radius r. So I'm just going to draw that out here. So if this is the radius, then we would have um, a circle around it. And then I'll just label this radius as r. And so it says the circle um, c has a circumference that is, or sorry, a diameter that is 2r. Well, that would be true because a diameter would go all the way across the circle and a diameter is equal to um, two radii. The circumference of the circle is pi r. That is not true because the circumference is equal to two times pi times the radius. One quarter of the circle has a length of one of these two. So let's take a look at a quarter of the circle. So we're talking about, um, this piece here, how big is this? And so this is one fourth of the circumference, right? So we're gonna be taking the circumference and we're gonna be doing one fourth of that. So one fourth times two pi r, and then one fourth times two, that's two fourths, which is really one half, right? So that simplifies to one half um, pi r. So really just pi r divided by 2. So e is correct, d would not be. So a fourth of 2 pi r is just pi r divided by 2. All right, number two, the table shows angle measures in radians and the amount of rotation of the circle corresponding to the angle. For example, 2 pi radians corresponds to one full rotation. So one full rotation down here is 2 pi radians or all the way around um, the circle. So I'm going to draw um, a couple circles here because I want to be able to look at different fractions of the circle. So if we look at, let me just duplicate this. All right, so we've got kind of two circles to look at here. And um, so this first one was zero, a rotation of zero, right? Um, and then if you just kind of look like one half will be fairly easy if we look at half of the circle. So if the whole way around the circle is two pi, right? Like all the way around here is two pi. So this kind of starts at zero and then we go all the way around is two pi. That means that halfway around the circle would just be pi. So half of that would just be pi. Um, so halfway around the circle is pi radians. So then let's take a look. I see another one um, divided by two here. So if we take and we look at splitting pi into halves, so if I take and split this top part in half, that's going to be pi over 2, right? So then this is 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, because 2 over 2 just simplifies to 1. And then this right here would be 3 pi over 2. If I'm just looking at counting half pies, so 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2s, 3 pi over 2s. And so if you look at 3 pi over 2, okay, that's 3 fourths of the way around the whole circle. So that's 3 fourths. If we look at how much did we divide the whole circle into, it's divided into fourths. So then this is 1, 2, 3 fourths of a rotation. Um, so then looking at some other ones here, um, we can look into, um, well, here's pi over 2 in our angle measure and we know that's right here and so pi over two is one fourth of the way around the um circle so one fourth of the whole way and so then if we start looking at some some other ones here so now this pi over six so this one i'm just going to look at so again the top half of the circle is pi right so then this is pi so zero to pi so this top part is pi now I want pi divided into six equal pieces. So if I take and divide this pi up here into six equal pieces, so here's two equal pieces. So now I need to divide each of these equal pieces into thirds, 
because that'll give me a total of six equal pieces up there, right? So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've divided pi into six equal pieces. So one of those slices is pi over six, right? So here's the angle pi over six. How much of the whole circle is that? So that's one twelfth, because if we split the top into six pieces, the bottom is gonna be six pieces. So one top slice is one twelfth of the whole circle. So then if we're looking into um, eighths, so we'd be looking at splitting the circle into, now this is the circle, right? So splitting the circle into eighths. So there's eight different pieces. So one eighth of the circle would be here. And if we look at um, pi, okay, so this top part, right, is pi. So pi is being split into what? Fourths, okay? So that's pi split into fourths. So one eighth of the circle is pi divided by four. One sixth of the circle, so maybe I'll draw another circle here. So one sixth of our circle, so the whole circle needs to be split into six equal pieces, which means that the top is split into three because we'd have three and three. So remember that this top is pi. If we want one sixth of that, or sorry, one sixth of the whole circle is just one slice of that. So that's just this top piece, pi, and split into thirds. That's one third of pi. So pi over three for one sixth of the circle. So then if we're looking at two pi over threes, so here's our pi over threes. So we have one pi over three, here's two pi over threes. So how much of the whole circle is that? Well, if we look at slices, then that's one, two slices out of how many? Six. So that's one third of the circle. Then our final one here is seven eighths. So if we go back into this one, this one's cutting the circle into eighths. We wanna look at seven of them. So seven eighths of the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's seven eighths of the way around the circle. And then these are our pi over fours because that takes this pi, splits it into four equal pieces. So then that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pi over four is seven eighths of the way around. Number three, a wheel has a radius of one foot. After the wheel has traveled a certain distance in a clockwise direction, the point P has returned to its original position. How many feet could the wheel have traveled? Um, and so when we're going around here, right? So all the way around, the circumference of that is equal to two times pi times the radius. Well, in this case, our radius is one foot. So we've traveled two pi feet. So it says after the wheels traveled a certain distance counterclockwise, it's returned to its original position. So this would be one time around would be two pi feet. Okay, it could also have gone 10 pi because this would just be five times around because this would be two pi, four pi around again, six pi, eight pi, 10 pi if it had gone around five times. So two pi or 10 pi. Number four, here are some labeled points on the unit circle. So what is the measure in radians of angle POR? So let's look at angle POR here. So POR is this one, and we want radians, right? Um, and so this angle in radians is pi over 2. Because remember, this whole top half, right, is pi radians. And this is half of that. So this is halfway between. So this is pi over 2 straight up like that. Like a 90 degree angle is the same as pi over 2 radians. Now it says angle POQ is half of that. So POQ, this one, is half of this angle. 
So what would that be in radians? So half of pi over 2, right, is equal to pi over 4. Then it wants us to label point U on the circle so that it measures 3 pi over 4s. So this is 3 pi over 4. So here's 1 pi over 4. Here's 2 pi over 4s. So 3 pi over 4s would be right in the middle here. So this would be 3 of them. So let me get a different color here. So we've got 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4s, 3 pi over 4s. And then we wanted to label that point as U. Then finally, we want point V so that it's 3 pi over 2s. So pi over 2, remember, is this angle here. So here's pi over 2. So that's 1 pi over 2. We want 3 pi over 2s. So that's 1 pi over 2. Here's 2 pi over 2. Here's 3 pi over 2s. So point V would be right here so that this angle is equal to 3 pi over 2s. Number 5, mark the points on the unit circle that have an x coordinate of 4 fifths. So remember on a unit circle, the idea here is that um, the radius is equal to 1. So all the way out to here is equal to 1. So we just want to go 4 fifths of the way. So, you know, you can take the segment if you want and split it into five equal parts. So like one, two, three, four, five. And so you're going to go four fifths of that way. That's what we're doing on here. Um, so about four fifths, you can kind of eyeball it. And so now mark the points on the circle that have that X coordinate. So here's four fifths. So here's a point on the circle straight up and straight down. Okay, that are four fifths of the way along this radius. Um, so this ordered pair is four fifths something, and this one is also four fifths, and then some y coordinate. Now it wants us to find those y coordinates. So we know that this um, x coordinate is four fifths. We also know that the radius is one. So I know this length is one. And now I want to find the y coordinate. So I want to find this height, right? And so you see that this is creating a little right triangle here. So let me just kind of redraw this off to the side. And um, so we can just do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that y value would need to be. So we know the radius length is one, and we now know that um, this length is four fifths. And so we can just do Pythagorean theorem to find out this. So one squared plus um, four fifths squared is equal to y squared. So one squared is one, four fifths squared. So four squared is 16. Um, oh, whoops, what am I doing? This is wrong. This should be. 1 squared is equal to 4 fifths squared plus y squared. This is the hypotenuse. It should be by itself. That's your c squared. So 1 squared is 1. 4 fifths squared is 16 over 25. And then y squared. So now we're going to need to subtract um, 16 over 25 to both sides. So I'm just going to write this. I'm going to get this to be a common denominator with this. So I'm just going to write this as 25 over 25 because 25 divided by 25 is still 1, but now it has this denominator. So now when I subtract 16 over 25, I can do um, 25 minus 16, which is 9. Keep the bottom the same. Then we can square root both sides. And the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 25 is 5. So our y coordinate is 3 fifths. So this length here is 3 fifths. So when we go over 4 fifths and up, we would go up 3 fifths. Or we would go down 3 fifths. 
Number six, a point 815 lies on a circle centered at zero, zero. Um, where does the circle intersect the X axis? And where does the circle intersect the Y axis? So we've got this point um, 815 right here. So what we want to do is um, we know the X value. We know the Y value. We want to figure out this radius because that's how far out the circle will reach on each axis. So we know that this is 8 and this is 15. Let's solve for the radius. The radius is the hypotenuse in this case. So R squared equals 8 squared plus 15 squared. So R squared is equal to 64 plus 225. Add those together and we get 289. Square root both sides and we get R is equal to 17. So this tells us that the radius of our circle is equal to 17. So when we have our circle drawn here, that means that it's going to reach out to 17 for an X coordinate here, right? Like this length is 17. So on the X axis, our ordered pair is gonna be 17, zero. And on the Y axis, it's going to be zero, 17. Then we also have this one is going to be negative 17, 0. And then this one is going to be 0, negative 17. Because those will be the same length as your radius. So find the radius and then that's how far out it goes on each axis. Number seven, these two triangles are similar. Explain why the tangent of A equals the tangent of D. So first of all, when we set up the tangent of A, remember tangent is opposite over adjacent. So when we're looking at A, opposite is lowercase a, adjacent is lowercase b. And then when we do tangent of D, tangent of D equals lowercase d over lowercase e. So now we got to prove that these are the same. So remember that these two triangles are similar. So there's some scale factor, okay, that will bring each of these corresponding sides to each other. So D corresponds with A. So let's just call the scale factor here K. So that means that A equals K times D, right? Take D, multiply it by K. Also, B is equal to um, K times E, since E and B are corresponding sides. So A is actually the same as K times D. So we'll just sub that in. And then B is the same as K times E. So then these share a common factor of K that would cancel out. So this is actually equal to D over E as well. So tan A is equal to D over E and tan D is equal to D over E. So they are the same.